Today, we are taking a look at a lesson plan that focuses on three specific lesson preparation features. You will notice that this lesson plan includes content objectives and language objectives, a skill we previously learned and infused in our everyday classroom learning. We are now looking to add another feature of lesson preparation. Content concepts are appropriate for age and educational background. The lesson I'm using comes from a fourth grade lesson from my view the literacy curriculum for kindergarten through fifth grade. Sixth grade teachers, it's important to know that you may not have some of the resources that I use in my lesson preparation, but the ideas still apply. So let's take a look at the lesson we're working through today. The lesson we are looking at from my view is unit three, week one, lesson two. Our weekly essential question focuses on how do people communicate in diverse ways? In the previous lesson, students have already discussed different ways that people communicate. Today, we're moving into different ways that people with physical disabilities communicate. I have both my content objective and my language objective posted for my students in their Seesaw assignment. Let's take a look at what that looks like for students. Here I am in Seesaw. You'll notice that when students read the directions or listen to them, they will see both their language and content objectives. Also, if I open the template, their objectives are included on the first slide of their assignment as well. It is important that our students know what they are supposed to learn and how they're going to demonstrate their learning. These objectives were found in an amazing resource for my view on Savvis. Let's go take a look at the Language Awareness Handbook so I can show you where I found these objectives. Here I am on Savvis. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my fourth grade book. And then in the table of contents, I'm going to go to Unit 3, Week 1, Lesson 2. This has brought me to all of the resources available for my lesson. At the top of my page, I see all of my content objectives for the lesson. Notice I can push View More to see the rest of the objectives. For the language objectives, we find those in a guide called the Language Awareness Handbook. The guide that I am looking for is under Teacher Resources. Tap Teacher Resources, scroll down, and you'll find the Language Awareness Handbook. I'm going to tap to open that. The Language Awareness Handbook has scaffolded activities for your reading workshop, your reading writing bridge, and your writing workshop. Here I've navigated to the Reading Workshop section for the lesson I am teaching. As I look through this, I notice there are language objectives to the left for both the Prepare to Read, Interact with the Text, and the Reflect and Share. For this lesson, I chose the language objective that went with Interact with the Text because that is my main focus for this lesson. Sixth grade teachers, you can also find your standards and language objectives for your unit within your My Perspectives textbook. Here I am at the introduction for Unit 1. You can see that I have unit goals on the right-hand side that break down my content objectives for the lesson. On the left-hand side, I do have unit goals that go over our language objectives. Also, as I scroll down, you can see that I have a language standard that is linked to this unit as well. Before considering the features of lesson preparation, I would have moved into introducing the text. However, I'm going to stop here because I believe there's a chance that some of my students aren't aware of what physical disabilities are. In order to gauge their understanding, I'm going to ask a very low barrier prompt of, tell me about a time you interacted with or read about a person with a physical disability. Let's go back to Seesaw to see how the students would be able to answer this. On the second slide of the student's template, I post and record their prompt. I allow for multiple methods of interacting with this prompt to encourage all students, regardless of their ability, to engage. I very intentionally add the drawing feature to my lessons because knowing the educational background of my students, I know they will not be able to record their thoughts in writing or with speaking. Sometimes it can be challenging to come up with your low barrier questions. I got the idea for our low barrier question for this lesson from our Sabbath textbook. Here I am in the teacher edition of the Savvis textbook. Notice on my page, there's a section called ELL Access. This section breaks down ways that I can help access my students' background knowledge so I can evaluate if this content is appropriate for what they already know. 
you'll find ELL access sections throughout your entire textbook. This is just one example of how we can begin to ensure our content concepts are appropriate for our students' educational background. We can't always anticipate our students' educational knowledge. By asking a low barrier question at the beginning of the lesson, we can quickly identify students that may be lacking background knowledge on a topic. You'll notice in my lesson plans, I intentionally plan for this moment. I know that I cannot always anticipate student needs. So I ask that low barrier question so I am prepared with what additional content they may need exposure to. And then I continue with my lesson as prescribed until we reach the end. At the end of the lesson, I ask students to open their Seesaw assignment. They're doing this to evaluate their objectives. Student self-reflection helps me gauge how successful my students were at mastering their objectives. Our challenge for you is to consider how you can choose appropriate content concepts for your students' educational background. Consider adding a low barrier question to gauge background knowledge of your students.